higher blood ketone levels have benefits? Like, should we be chasing a higher number? And on the flip side, do, can higher blood ketone levels get dangerous? So let's talk about the ranges of ketosis or what the, some loose guidelines for what they are. So nutritional ketosis would be really considered anything from 0.5 or 0.6 millimoles per liter as in a blood test to all the way up to 3.0 millimoles per liter, right? Yeah. So, and then therapeutic levels of ketosis, things that people are using to treat things, uh, certain types of cancer and epilepsy, uh, maybe Parkinson's, Parkinson's MS, MS, things like is that. Is yeah. 3.0 to 5.0. And it does take a lot of discipline to get into that 3.0 to 5.0 range over a long period of time. So these, so to do that, you would be eating more like 10 to 20 total carbs. You wouldn't be messing with net carbs. Yeah. to get that high of a reading. Yeah. Also, if you're doing an extended fast, you would see that. Like, again, you're doing an extended fast, so your total carbs is going to be zero. Uh, so, yeah, that you know, they almost call that starvation ketosis. So, and just a quick tip, we're not talking about taking external or exogenous supplement sources. Right? That right. Does, Artificially boosting that number. We're not talking about that. We're talking about your body being in a specific range of ketosis, simply from the way you're eating. Yeah. So in generally, people uh, will describe those higher levels of nutritional ketosis, so anything between, you know, like 1.5 to 3, as they're having better clarity, they're having a lot less inflammation, they just generally feel better, they started, you know, they're sleeping better, uh, than when they were below like 1.5, you know, 0.6 to 1.5. So generally on that higher side of nutritional ketosis, people are reporting just generally better results. Um, if you are at a 5.0 and you're not doing any kind of fasting or anything like that, and you're having other symptoms, then you do need to see a doctor. And you know, there is such a thing as, um, especially if you're a type one diabetic, diabetic ketoacidosis, those levels are extremely dangerous, especially if you have also have high blood sugars along with that. Yeah. And if you are a type 1 diabetic you, or type 2, you need to make sure that you're doing keto under a doctor's care, at least for insulin management purposes. Yeah. Right? You, because things will change. Your insulin needs will change as the longer you're on keto. So it's very important to have a medical professional involved in that process.